Hi guys, I'm Dias and you're watching the SUV Vital channel. In this video, we are going to be the first who compared the four-wheel drive system of the brand new Toyota Land Cruiser 300 with several rivals. Ford F-150 Raptor, Mercedes G63, Nissan Patrol, Land Rover Defender, Toyota Land Cruiser 200, and the long wheelbase Range Rover from the Clash of the Titans. Subscribe to the channel to not miss the next video where we will test the American SUVs such as Hummer H2, Cadillac Escalade, and the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk, though the last one is more about drag strip than dirt. Make yourself comfortable, we're kicking off. We brought the new Land Cruiser 300 to the same spectacular climb where we have already tested most of its classmates and potential rivals. A small note about the Land Cruiser 300. This is exactly the same car I drove during Toyota's official off-road presentation. That time it was on mud terrain tires, but today it has factory tires, Bridgestone Dueler ATs. The link to this video is available in the description below. The first contestant is the 2014 Nissan Patrol. Unlike its premium cousin, Infiniti QX80, the Patrol has a set of off-road attributes. Let me remind you that Infinity was not able to conquer this climb by the most difficult line. So let's see how Nissan will cope with it. The first drive is without activation of the off-road assistance. The car reaches the first diagonal suspension, slows down almost to a full stop, and actively slips with the suspended wheels. Look at the front left wheel. Well, it took a little time for the traction control system to engage. But when it got down to business, the patrol continued climbing with its front wheel raised up high. The next obstacle. The front left and rear right wheels are hanging in the air. A slight wheel spin and the patrol rushes to the top, completing its drive. Now, let's activate the low range, switch to rock mode, and lock the rear differential. The first obstacle. The Nissan stops with the suspended front right wheel and starts driving. As soon as the driver touched the gas pedal, the car immediately pushed forward as if there were no obstacles at all. Here, the driver had to add some RPMs because of insufficient grip of the skidding wheels. Only when the traction control system started clamping the front left wheel, which can be seen from its typical deceleration, there was more torque sent to the front right wheel and the patrol drove forward. The Nissan has no issues driving further up the hill, thanks to the long wheelbase and activated off-road arsenal. Next participant, Toyota Land Cruiser 200. This is the car I drove during the off-road presentation of the new Land Cruiser. Today, this car and the new Land Cruiser 300 will be driven by one driver who just drove the Nissan Patrol through the obstacle course. The first drive is in standard mode. The first stopping point the rear left wheel is suspended, and the right one went deep into the wheel arm. The driver raised the revs, and the traction control system reacted immediately. It's clearly visible how the slipping wheels slow down, but this is not enough to continue driving. The traction control system cannot clamp the suspended wheels so that the loaded wheels could receive enough torque. That's why the Land Cruiser is standing still. It's time to activate the off-road arsenal. Lowered row, center lock, and rock and dirt mode. More gas. The wheel spin intensity went down. The Land Cruiser rolls back a little, and with the front wheel lifted, it drives forward with the sounds of the braking system. The second obstacle and diagonal suspension again. The driver raises the revs, and after a slight slip, the car drives forward on three wheels. But at the next point, the LC200 has to stay longer. The loaded front wheel slips, and the heavily loaded right wheel stands still, twitching helplessly due to the lack of torque. 
The Toyota was able to continue driving only after the front wheel stood straight. I have already noticed this feature on different cars. The traction control system is most effective when the front wheels are in a straight position. Write in the comments if this is applicable to your car too. And do not forget to indicate the make and model of the car. Meanwhile, the Land Cruiser has finished its drive and we have the next participant. The newest Land Cruiser 300 with a 3.5 liter turbocharged gasoline V6. Unlike the Land Cruiser 200, this car has stock tires and a limited slip differential in the rear axle. The LC300 starts in standard drive mode. The car drives to the first obstacle, makes a stop, and then with suspended wheels spinning, the Land Cruiser stands still. Let's activate the off-road arsenal, switch to the low range, lock the central differential, and the rock mode in the multi-terrain select system. The Toyota immediately started driving forward with almost no wheel spin. The front right wheel went up high and the rear left wheel reached its maximum travel. Even after stopping and standing on only three wheels, the new Land Cruiser continued to drive confidently. After stopping at the second point, the LC300 easily pushes further without any hint of idle wheel rotation. The car stopped at the third obstacle and the driver set the front wheels straight. So we won't know if the new Land Cruiser would be able to continue driving with the wheels turned which the LC200 couldn't do. But even without this, it is clearly visible that the Land Cruiser 300 passed all the tests better than its predecessor. The next in line is a long wheelbase Range Rover with a supercharged 5-liter V8. The car has a low profile, absolutely non-off-road tires, and in the first race, by tradition, the standard mode and the air suspension is raised to the upper position. The Range Rover lifted its front right wheel on the first obstacle, not the rear left one as all previous participants. The driver increases the RPMs. The rear wheel makes a barely noticeable slip and the car drives forward with all wheels rotating at equal speeds. The Range Rover stopped at the second point and then we saw something new, a brief rotation of the suspended wheel and further confident driving forward. But the third obstacle required significantly higher engine RPMs. But the overall result is the same. Now, let's activate the low range and the rock crawl mode. Let's see how this affects the performance of the Range Rover. Unfortunately, the engine sound can't be heard because of the strong wind. The car reaches the first obstacle and stops. Then, with even less wheel spin than it was in the previous attempt, the Range Rover continues the ascent. There are no problems at the second obstacle, as well as at the third. The unloaded wheels don't make any idle rotations when the Range Rover resumes driving after short stops. Excellent result. The next participant is the Land Rover Defender with a gasoline 3 liter turbo engine. Unlike the previous participant, the Defender has stock off-road worthy Goodyear Adventure tires. The air suspension is in top position. The Land Rover reaches the first obstacle, stops with the front right wheel raised high, and without any hint of slipping, 
confidently continues driving, even being on three wheels. At the second obstacle, the left front wheel came off the ground. A barely noticeable wheel spin, and the defender drove on. The Land Rover drifted a little at the third obstacle due to small rocks under the wheels. But this almost did not affect the result. Now, let's watch how it drives with off-road assistance. The gearbox is in low range, and the rock crawl mode is on. Just like the Range Rover, the Defender's front right wheel rises up. As soon as the driver touches the gas pedal, Land Rover immediately starts driving. The car rolls back to stop in the most uncomfortable position with a clear demonstration of the front wheel travel. But there are no problems here either. At the third point, the Defender is again exposed to the most difficult conditions. The main load falls on two diagonally located wheels. Plus, let's not forget about the steep slope and lots of small rocks under the wheels. To understand the complexity of the test, note the slight wheel slip at the beginning of the driving. While the engine is practically inaudible, I can assume that it was almost at idle RPMs. Very impressive. The next participant is the 2021 Mercedes AMG G63 with a 4-liter turbocharged gasoline V8. It has front independent suspension, unlike its predecessor. You can watch the drive of the previous G63 in the Clash of the Titans video, clicking the link in the description. And as a usual case with the AMG G63, the car has high-speed road tires. The first drive is in normal mode. stop at the first obstacle. And then the traction control system, as if assuming the further scenario, reacts much more quickly, excluding idle wheel spin. The G63 rolls back a little to stop with the rear left wheel hanging. The driver steps on the gas, the unloaded wheels rotate a little, and the car drives on. The Mercedes rolls back again to stop at the most difficult position, standing on two wheels only. The driver steadily increases the RPMs. The wheels slip a little, and then the Mercedes confidently drives forward. The G-Wagon stops at the final obstacle, balancing on diagonally located wheels. Please keep in mind the rubble and road tires. The driver steps on the gas. The wheels slip a little, and then a familiar scenario. Not bad for the simple mode. Now, let's watch how this G-Wagon will pass these obstacles in maximum combat mode. The gearbox is in low range, and all three diffs are locked. visible at the first obstacle. There's no more wheel spin when positioning the vehicle. Would it come as a surprise to anyone that the G-Wagon easily continued driving from this position? There are no problems at the second point either. All wheels rotate at the same speed, and the car drives forward. A slight rollback to stop at the third point, but even here, despite the road tires and rubber under the wheels, there is not even a hint of slipping. 
That's what honest mechanical locking differentials mean. The next participant is the 2019 Ford F-150 Raptor with a 3.5 liter gasoline turbo V6. This truck has participated in the battle of pickups together with Volkswagen Amarok, Ford Ranger and others. The link to this video is in the description. The first drive is as usual in default four wheel drive mode without activation of the off-road assistance. The Ford drives to the first stop, but it slips a lot to arrive at the spot. Check out the impressive travel of the rear wheel. It went beyond the body, but still didn't reach the ground. The driver steps on the gas, the unloaded wheels slip a little, and the pickup drives further, reaching the second obstacle. Due to the design of the chassis, the Raptor doesn't even notice the diagonal suspension there was a barely noticeable slip at the third obstacle. But obviously, this was caused by the specifics of the soil. Because unlike the rest of the participants, the Raptor's wheels kept touching the ground. Now the driver has activated the rock crawl mode in which the Raptor automatically switches to the low range and locks the rear axle differential. During the previous drive, the Ford slipped here with the rear left wheel, and now there are no idle spins. Look how deep the rear right wheel goes into the arc. More gas and a slight rear axle drift, the Raptor drives forward, while the loaded front left wheel makes a slight slip with delay. Probably this delay caused the drift of the rear axle because the idle front wheel, instead of pulling the truck forward, served as an anchor. There is no point in commenting further, since even in normal mode, the Raptor showed excellent results on these obstacles. The drive was no exception. Before summarizing, let's go back to the main character of this video and let the TLC 300 drive the obstacle course once again. The climb may have become a little more difficult after attempts of all participants. The driver has activated the low range, locked the central differential, and selected the rock mode. The Toyota drives to the first obstacle. Stops at the spot with the front right wheel raised high and starts driving with a slight slip of the unloaded wheels. The Land Cruiser has no issues with driving further after a full stop with the rear left wheel hanging in the air. The Toyota rolls back to stop at the most difficult spot of the second obstacle. But nothing surprising happens here either. The LC300 is driving forward confidently. The last test with deep diagonal suspension and only two wheels touching the ground. The driver steps on the gas and the Toyota, with a minor jerk at the very beginning, confidently pushes up the hill despite small rocks and steep slope. Well, after watching all drives of the participants, it's about time to summarize. The Nissan Patrol with road tires showed an excellent result, especially in comparison to its premium cousin, Infiniti QX80. The latter wasn't able to conquer this climb per difficult line not so long ago. The patrol coped with all the obstacles, both in normal and off-road modes. Plus, unlike the Toyotas, the Nissan, also with prolonged wheel spin, was still able to drive the first obstacle in the normal mode. Well, after activation of the off-road arsenal, the patrol drove as if there were no bumps and potholes at all except for the second obstacle, where the Nissan clearly lacked tire grip 
and the effectiveness of the traction control system. The Toyota Land Cruiser 200 got stuck at the first obstacle in normal mode, though it allowed to demonstrate the effectiveness of the rock and dirt off-road mode with the low range and center differential lock. And to my great surprise, the off-road mode did not save the Land Cruiser 200 from idle wheel spin. I don't exclude that the Land Cruiser 200 fans start blaming the driver for doing something wrong on purpose. But look how confidently the patrol drove in this area and how long the Land Cruiser slipped before driving further. The Range Rover has shown an exemplary four-wheel drive performance. That wasn't only because of the efficient traction control system, but also due to the electronically controlled central differential. The Range Rover easily coped with all the obstacles, even in normal mode. And when the rock crawl mode with the low range was activated, the drive was just perfect. Though, for that price ask, the Range Rover just can't drive badly. The Land Rover Defender's four-wheel drive is even better than its big brother's one. There is an effective traction control system reinforced by electronically controlled central and rear cross-axle differentials. Therefore, the Defender drove the obstacles with the same British nobility at almost half the price of a big Range Rover. Also, don't forget about the air suspension, which improves the ride smoothness and increases the ground clearance when necessary. The Japanese SUVs of today's test are deprived of this option. The Mercedes AMG G63 surprised with prolonged wheel spin in normal mode, but it is neglectable because firstly, the G63 was able to drive the entire obstacle course in normal mode, despite periodical idle rotations of the wheels. And secondly, with all three differentials locked, which is not possible for all other participants, the Mercedes drove exactly as the driver wanted. The drive was directly proportional to throttling, regardless of terrain and slope. And all this on high-speed road tires, a real SUV. The Ford Raptor once again surprised with suspension articulation, which compensated for its traction control flaws. This is exactly why the pickup slipped quite a lot in normal mode when positioning at the first obstacle. The crawl mode and locked rear diff have improved the situation, though this also made the Raptor drift with the rear axle during the diagonal suspension. The more effective work of the traction control system could prevent the front right wheel from slipping and ensure that more torque is transmitted to the front left wheel, which was stationary. Remember, the drives of the Defender and the Range Rover with the rear differential locked, their rear axle always remained on the line. And now, let's talk about the main character of this video, the newest Toyota Land Cruiser 300. Just like its predecessor, in normal mode, the LC300 got stuck on the first obstacle. But after activation of the low range, Locking the central differential and switching in the rock mode, the Land Cruiser handled all the obstacles with ease. Moreover, it did it clearly better than the Land Cruiser 200, even with factory tires. And as you remember, for the purity of the experiment, there was the same driver behind the wheel of both SUVs. The new Land Cruiser drives better in difficult conditions, and the traction control system no longer scares the driver with weird sounds. That's how you can hear it well on the old Land Cruiser 200. And this is how it is absolutely inaudible on the new Land Cruiser 300. Plus, don't forget the version with three lockers. Will it drive here like the G-Wagon? We will definitely find out at the first opportunity. In the meantime, the traditional awarding of the places. The third place goes to the Toyota Land Cruiser 200 as it slipped more than others, even in the off-road mode. The second place is shared by the Toyota Land Cruiser 300 and the Nissan Patrol. Toyota got stuck on the first obstacle just like the Land Cruiser 200, but in off-road mode it drove much better. Though the Patrol did well in the normal mode, but in the combat mode the Nissan slipped with three wheels at the second obstacle. 
The new Land Cruiser 300 drove confidently in the same spot with no wheel spin thanks to the more efficient traction control system. The first place goes to the Land Rover Defender. Regardless of the selected mode, the Defender always demonstrated an excellent result. Moreover, its price is quite comparable to the Japanese SUVs. You definitely have a question. What about the Range Rover, G63, and the Ford Raptor? Considering their price, power, and design features, I think it would be incorrect to compare them with the above four SUVs. Therefore, I decided to leave them out of the contest. Moreover, in one of the next videos, we will watch them again, but in appropriate company. That's all for me. Write in the comments which SUV surprised you and from which you expected more. I'm Dias. See you in the next video.